A set of data is normally distributed with a mean of 57 and a standard deviation of 4. And the question is, within what range should we expect 68% of the data to fall? Well, we talked in the lesson about what it means for a set of data to be normally distributed. That's extremely important, comes up all the time in the real world. And let me just quickly show you a graph that, that explains how normal distributions work. Imagine that the horizontal axis of this graph has all of the different numbers appearing in our set of data. I'm not showing those, but just imagine that it does. And then the vertical axis has the number of times each number appears in the data. So maybe the number 50 is right here. And then if you want to know how many 50s are there in the data, you go up to the top of the curve here, or up to where the curve is, and then you look directly across and it will tell you maybe it's 14 right here. Oh, I, well, I, I see the number 50 appears 14 times. And so you have a curve showing all of the, of the frequencies of the different numbers in the data. And what's important about this curve, it's a normal curve, or another word for it is, the, is a bell curve. What's important is that the two sides are mirror images of each other. It's symmetrical. And notice that the mean is right in the middle here. And so when you have a set of data that's normally distributed, the graph of its frequency distribution will look like this. It will be symmetrical. And the number that will appear the most times in the data will be the mean of the data. And it makes sense that the mean is right under the highest point on the curve. You go across here and see more, the mean will appear more times than any other number. And then as you move above the mean, as you look at the frequency of larger and larger numbers, they will appear less and less frequent, frequently as you go higher. And you get a really big number over here, there won't be very many of those in the data at all. You go across and, oh, it's just a very small number of times that it appears. And the same thing happens as you get smaller and smaller numbers. So you, the, the further you get below the mean, the less frequently those numbers are going to appear. Now, if you know the mean of a set of data and if you know the standard deviation, and we were given those two pieces of information for this problem. Remember the mean is supposedly 57 and the standard deviation is 4. With these two pieces of information you can predict what percentage of all of the data, what percentage of the numbers are going to appear in a certain within a certain range. And the way it works is 68 percent of the numbers are going to be within one standard deviation from the mean. So if you start here at 57, see this is this is 57 because that's the mean, and if you go up one standard deviation, you go up four from 57, and then you go down one standard deviation, this little letter here, this is a Greek letter, sigma, that stands for standard deviation. So see, this is, each of these stands for four places. So if you go up one standard deviation, and you go down, within this range right here, 68% of the numbers should fall. 68% of the numbers should be with, with, within this range. And then let's just calculate what that is. It should be from 57 minus 4 to 57 plus 4. 57 minus 4 is 53. 57 plus 4 is 61. So 68% of the numbers should fall within the range of 53 to 61. And the reason we can predict this is we know the mean, but then we also know the standard deviation. Remember, that is a measure of how spread apart the numbers are. If the standard deviation is really big, what if it were... 40 instead of 4. Well, then to get 68% of the numbers, we'd have to go really far above the mean and really far below the mean. The final answer to this problem, though, is 53 to 61.